celebration and each year it gets bigger and better. A? Eh? Yeah. Oh, okay. Diaspora. That's the theme for this um, this year's celebration. No one can argue that what happened to the continent of Africa is a tragic and tragic, um, horrible thing, honestly. But in reality, no one knows the mind of God and the world is a better place because we were taken and distributed to impact the world, and we're still impacting the world today. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. We're the youth who will take the lessons of the past, translate them into the words of today, and pass them on to our own children and grandchildren. We need to learn all we can about our heritage so that it becomes a part of us who we are and who we will become. We're glad you're here. Because you are part of the diaspora of people who have their roots in Africa. And you have special gifts, knowledge, and insight that are important to shape. Even those of you who don't look African have roots in that great continent where the human race began. So each, so each of you is part of the African diaspora. We're glad you're here because we love our church for teaching us that all the people in the whole world reflect God's image in a variety of ways. We're glad you came to join us here at Altadena Baptist Church where people of all races, all ages, and all nations come together in worship and fellowship to each week to praise God, to love one another, and to bring hope to people in our community and to the whole world. We're, We're glad you're here. All cultures express themselves musically. Music is one of the most profound ways in which the African diaspora has impacted the world. John Newton, the author of the wonderful hymn Amazing Grace, had a miraculous conversion after years as a cruel slave ship captain. We hear his personal testimony every time we sing the hymn, Amazing Grace, how sweet that sound that saved a wretch like me. A modern musicologist, Whitney Phipps, has pointed out that the hymn's music is built not on Western diatonic scale, the white piece, but it is actually built on the pentatonic black note scale. Mr. Phillips went to Washington to look at the original score, and it says, Words, John Newton. Music, unknown. It seems clear that music, the music John Newton heard from the miserable slaves on the ship, probably stuck in his mind. Maybe that pentatonic scale helped lead his, to his conversion. This is just one example of how powerful. African music has influenced the world. Oh, <laughs> 
kumbaya means come by here. So the lyric could be translated as come by here, my Lord, come by here. The song enjoyed popularity during the folk revival in the 60s, largely due by Joan Baez's 1962 recording of that song. And it also became associated with the civil rights movement of that same period. Kumbaya, my lord, kumbaya, join with me. Kumbaya, my lord, kumbaya. Oh, lord, kumbaya. Someone's crying, lord. Someone's crying. Program. I think to commend all of the organizers, 
all the participants, the youth that we have seen have been certainly inspiring and uh, deeply touching. So I am grateful and humble about being a part of this event today. The towering miniseries Roots features a haunting and inspirational theme song called Oluwa, written and produced by Quincy Jones and rendered by Letta Mabulu, the legendary South African vocalist. Oluwa gives us these words in the Yoruba language. Ishe Oluwa Oluwa translation, the work of God cannot be destroyed. The book of Genesis, as we have heard already today, contains the familiar story of Joseph, who was sold into slavery by his jealous brothers. But God, God was with Joseph throughout his ordeal of bondage in Egypt. And Joseph eventually rose to the highest levels of power and influence in Egypt, becoming a trusted advisor to Pharaoh. And as we were told a while ago, when their father Jacob died, Joseph's brothers became terrified. They feared that Joseph would use his power and influence to exact a terrible revenge on them. So they went to Joseph, fell down on there at his feet, begged his forgiveness. Being a godly man, Joseph did forgive them. And he spoke those words from that familiar scripture, Genesis 50, 20. Ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. Like Joseph's brothers, the Americans and the Europeans who forced the sons and daughters of Mother Africa into slavery, had evil intentions. But God, our God, had another plan. <laughs> he meant it for good. He took those sinful acts and extracted from them an unexpected good. And the progeny of those enslaved Africans scattered throughout the world, forming a beautiful diaspora whose richness of culture, courage, Resilience, intellect, and extraordinary achievements have blessed the entire world. They meant it for evil, but he meant it for good. Now, this, <laughs> this does not mean that slavery was God's will. There are those who say that slavery was God's way of removing our African forebears from the dark continent and bringing them to a Christian nation. In all due respect, I say that that line is nothing but a lot of poppycock because it is not biblical. How do we know this? Well, after he was resurrected and before he returned to God the Father, Jesus left very clear and very simple instructions for his followers. Remember what he told the apostles in the Great Commission? We find it in the very last paragraphs of the Gospel of Matthew. What did he say? He said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you. Jesus didn't say a thing about enslaving folks. <laughs> Didn't say a thing about colonizing their lands and destroying their culture. He did not command us to set up inquisitions or to send armed soldiers off on crusades. The Son of God did not mention manifest destiny, trails of tears, internment camps, segregation laws, Jim Crow. No. Our Savior did not issue orders to deny people the right to vote or to go to school or to hold a job or to buy a house or to make the simple everyday decision about what seat you're going to sit down on on a streetcar or a bus. No, slavery was not God's will. Slavery 
was sin. The centuries of brutal oppression heaped upon black people and other people of color around the world was sin. Sin because those acts violated the fundamental tenet of Christianity. Christ's command that we should love one another, love our neighbors as ourselves, and do unto others as we would have them do unto us. Our Savior summed up God's expectation for human behavior. Again, in the book of Matthew, we go to chapter 22, and verses 38 and 39. And then if you flip over to Mark and check out chapter 12, verses 30 and 31, the same theme comes back. You, you remember that story, the learned teacher of the law came to Jesus. He's going to try to, he's going to try to trap Jesus by, you know, asking him a trick question. Well, tell us, Rabbi, which commandment is the greatest? Jesus broke it down. He gave him a simple answer. Love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. These two commandments, the Savior said, hang all the law on the prophets. You don't love your brothers and sisters by enslaving them and oppressing them. So the people who did this to our forebears and those who seek to continue doing so in our time are acting in direct violation of the commands of Jesus Christ. But as with Joseph in the book of Genesis, God has been with our people throughout our nightmare of oppression. Now, because it is his perfect and sometimes intangible will that human beings make their own decisions and live with the consequences of those decisions, because of that, he didn't come down from on high and force the oppressors to cease their oppression. He did, however, he did, however, raise generation after generation of leaders, black and white, men and women who stood up and fought hard, often at the expense of lives, fought for freedom century after century until at last the final wicked pillars of legalized discrimination were toppled. God also enabled our people to thrive in the midst in the midst of their oppression. Fixed it so that we would become inventors, academics, entrepreneurs, explorers, poets, artists, authors, athletes, astronauts, musicians who created the most loved and emulated genres of music in the world, builders of towns, Builders of schools, universities, soldiers, soldiers who fought valiantly and gave their lives in every conflict from the American Revolution forward. Yes, intellectuals, philosophers, politicians, and finally, even a president of the United States. Is why, this is why, as we look back, as we look back at the horrors of yesterday and as we face the horrors of today, <laughs> this is why we can stare down the forces of oppression and say with the confidence and the joy expressed by Mother Maya Angelou, you may try, you may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may try me in the very earth, but still, but still, like dust, I rise. This is why we can lift every voice and sing those words penned by James Weldon Johnson. We have come over a way that with tears has been watered. We have treaded our path the blood of the slaughter. And you stop for a moment and realize that that's a metaphor, but that's real. Yeah. That's real.
fail. Nobody's exaggerating when he wrote those words down. And yet, ha, yet with a steady beat, steady, steady beat moving forward all the time. Moving forward in spite of whatever's in our way. Yet with a steady beat have not our weary feet come to that place for which our Father sighed. All of those for whom freedom, opportunity, simple happiness was nothing but a dream. We are here at the place that they only could dream of. Those who enslaved, brutalized, marginalized our forebearers had evil intentions. They sought not only to dominate the bodies, but to control the minds, break the spirits of our people. But the God of our weary years, the God of our silent tears, he had another plan. <laughs> A plan for black folks and put down people all over the world. It was his will that we would endure and survive with our humanity and our spirituality intact. That we would soar in spite of the oppressor's repeated, continuous, and vile attempts to clip our wings. And that our struggle for freedom and justice would become a beacon for oppressed peoples all over the world. The work of God cannot be destroyed. to know where you've been in order to know where you're going. A saying that has truly been repeated to me, often in history classes and by older folks. And truly, we have to remember where we've been, but we also need to have a plan, a roadmap of sorts to figure out where we're going. And knowing where we've been gives us purpose and direction in our future. It helps us understand the importance of a plan so history isn't just something we made way back when, but it is something we are hap helping to make happen now. 
We as African Americans have the strongest blood of any race. Our ancestors endured inhumane conditions and lives just to make it possible for us to get where we are today. We can't waste the legacy they've given us by not looking at where we're going and figuring out the roadmap to get us there. Our shoulders are still broad, strong, and full of a future that holds endless possibilities. So the question is, what will you do to write the history books of tomorrow? <coughs> in the 19th century wrote this story, which I had to share with you because it fits so well with our theme of the African diaspora. She tells a tale of a woman in the desert trying to make it to the distant land of freedom, but who was blocked by a deep flowing river. An elder counsels her. Have you seen the locusts, how they cross a stream? First one comes down to the water edge and is swept away. And then another comes, and then another, and then another, and at last, with their bodies piled up, a bridge is built, and the rest pass over. And she said, of those who come first, some are swept away and are hurt no more. Their bodies do not even hold, build the bridge, and are swept away and heard of no more. And what of that? And he said, and what of that? And she said, they make a track to the water's edge. They make a track to the water's edge. And she said, over that bridge, which shall be built with our bodies, who will pass? And he said, the entire human race. Thank you very much. How about a big hand for some wonderful musicians? 